Thank y'all. Would you turn this morning to Luke 12? Luke 12. Before we get into this further, there's something came, has come up to me two or three times coming in the parking lot, and I'm not going by anything I've seen necessarily, or I'm just, uh, you know, the Lord prepares us for stuff. Uh, in the parking lot, don't drive fast, okay? And don't cut corners. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You know, if there's a corner here and you can't see. Should you cut real close around the corner? You should go wide, right? So you can see and be seen. And uh, I don't care how late you are, don't drive fast in the parking lot. We've got kids all over the place and youth and carts, and right? Everybody clear on that? There's no reason for us to have any problems. So in the parking lot, two things, what? Don't drive fast. Drive, drive slow, slow, and be patient, kind, wait on each other, right? And then what else? Don't cut corners. Don't, don't dart around places you can't see and people can't see you. Don't do that. All right? Um, Luke 12. For weeks now, we have been on the wonderful subject of the kingdom of God. Does it mean more to you than it used to? Oh, my. I'm stirred. I, I don't think I'll ever think about the kingdom of God the same or the way I used to. And uh, like Phyllis said, if you hadn't been with us on Wednesday nights, you know, the Lord has done this from the beginning. What's going on on Friday, excuse me, what did I say, Wednesday night? We ought to be with us on Wednesday nights too. But <laughs> on, on Friday nights, the series that's going along is a companion to what's happening on Sunday yeah. and vice versa. Amen. And really, you don't, you're not getting the whole thing if you don't get to Friday nights. And so either, you know, make plans to be here is the best. Or, you know, get to tapes, get uh, downloaded off the internet, but get caught up with us. We've been on the wisdom of God. And this is not, I could say that for myself. I mean, I'm different concerning the wisdom of God than I used to be. Just a few months ago, I can tell, uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing things differently and discernment and, and understanding and, and wisdom is growing in me and increasing in me. We're getting yeah. our wisdom. And our understanding, right? And if you're not, you're going to be behind. And uh, see, all these things go together. We're believing God for prosperity. But how many know God is answering our prayer by teaching us about wisdom, right? Well, if you say, well, yeah, but I'm believing for prosperity, but you ignore all the wisdom teaching, well, it doesn't work. Well, what's the, pr the, the primary, the main key to prosperity? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, right? Well, that's what we're talking about on Sunday. So these two things go together. Wisdom and putting the kingdom first. And you can't ignore those things and just make confessions and prosper anyway. Doesn't work that way. And, and you know, we've been talking about how we can represent God properly. We want to, uh, you know... Everything to be the best and to portray best. And we, God's answering our prayer. It's through wisdom. We, he, we have to have his wisdom to know how to do it. So let's not forget these. Even after the Lord takes us on to other uh, teachings and other series, let's keep this in mind. And we're not just hearers only, but we are we're doers. We put things into practice and we're still doing them next year and the year after that, right? We are doers. In Luke 12, let's begin today at verse 17. Now, if you didn't bring a Bible with you, our ushers are in the aisle here with extra Bibles. Uh, hold up your hand, and they'll get one of these to you so that you can use one. And turn with us, find the Scriptures. And by all means, read your chapter every day, right? 
Monday through Friday. And if you don't know where, you know there are the bookmarks in the back at the information area. Luke 12, 17. Uh, let's see, 16 is where I need to start. He spoke a parable to them saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have much goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. There's a whole lot of what in there? I, 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 I think, I will, mine, I, I. And uh, God said to him, you fool. Well, he wasn't wise, was he? Now let's just stop right here. Wisdom sees the end result. Wisdom looks beyond today. Right? A wise man, a woman, is willing to sacrifice today for something tomorrow. A fool is willing to sacrifice tomorrow for something today. Right? Throw away your future. For whatever you can grab right now. And here this man is a fool. Why? Because he has no concept of what's going on or what's coming next. And if a wise man doesn't just think about piling up stuff for me. And that's all I'm thinking about. Because this life is just a vapor. Right? Right? A fool, and there are many in the world, lives like there is no tomorrow. Like this life is all there is, and all there is going to be. A fool lives like there is no God, and like there is no kingdom of God. A fool lives like there is no punishment or judgment for evil and sin. Right? A fool lives like there is no reward for faith and obedience. And like there is no coming and setting up of the kingdom of God over all the earth. But a wise man knows and is convinced no matter what it looks like, this is temporary. Right? No matter if this is all I've ever known. A wise man or woman says, no, no. The judgment of Christ, seed of Christ is coming quick. Right? This life will soon be over. The kingdom of God is already in existence and will soon be set up over all the world. And of this kingdom, there will be no end. And who's in the kingdom and who is not is being decided right now. And what place who has? Who has the greater places and who has the lesser places is being demonstrated right now. So a wise man, a wise woman is not just thinking about me being happy and comfortable, right? But thinking about the kingdom of God. This is what this flows into. He said, God said to him, you fool. This night, tonight, your soul will be required of you, and then whose shall those things be which you have provided? What about all your stuff? (laughs) Thank God for stuff, but it's just stuff. Right? It's just stuff. And like one fellow, one preacher said, you never saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul. Why? Because you can't take it with you. Right? And you wouldn't want to. 
Hmm? Would you? I said, you know, my, my dad went home to be with the Lord not, not long back, and there was a certain thing that I was actually getting ready to give him. I wanted to give it to him this year. And it, it aggravated me a little bit because I thought, Lord, he, the Lord said, he's already got better. <laughs> I thought, I reckon so. I mean, <laughs> what he's got now, he'd throw rocks at that, man. I mean, Right? I mean, what I'm talking about, he's already got better. But see, the problem is, heaven is not real to people. God is not real to people. This is what's real. What they see and feel, but not to faith people. The more you believe in something, the more real it is to you. The more you act like it's real. Can you say amen? Well, he, he Keep reading this. He said, verse 22, he said to his disciples, Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, neither for your body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat or food, and the body is more than clothes. Yes. Now skip on down to verse uh, 29. And seek not what you shall eat and what you shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. Now why did he say that? Is most of the world doing that? Yes, they are. He said, For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. And your Father knows you have need of all these things, of these things, but rather seek you. You seek what? The kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. Fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So sell what you have. Give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that fails not. Where no thief approaches. Neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Our heart should be in God. In the kingdom of God. Then where is your treasure going to be then? The kingdom of God. And people talk about giving it away. Don't, don't use that terminology. When, when, you're, when you're putting something into the kingdom, you're not giving it away. You're investing it. It's not leaving you. Right? No, he, notice what he said. Sell what you have. Liquidate. Give. And it'll be gone. But God will be happy with you. No, you're providing for who? For yourself. You're giving to others, but you're providing for yourself. This hasn't been real to people, has it? Provide yourself. Bags which wax not. Now down here, you know, you buy something and it depreciated before you got home with it. Right? You invest in something, it might do good according to the economy. It might not. Things change. They're subject to people lying and and stealing and everything else. But there is one 100% safe and secure investment. It's the kingdom of God. Now you ought to make natural investments. We've already talked about that. But above all, you make kingdom investments. These are the ones that stay with you. Not only in this life, but into the next. And nobody can mess them up. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, in talking about this, we're in Luke 12. I'd like for you to turn over to, uh, what is it? I think it's the 14th chapter. Yep, chapter 14, just a page or two over. In talking about the kingdom of God, we are to seek this first. We, we've heard it so many times till it, it's common to us, but what does it mean? Seek first the kingdom of God. That means nothing else is first. That means the, the, the majority of my time, my thought, my resources go to this. 
Well, be before you go to that, that uh, place in Luke there, 14, go to Philippians 2. And we'll read this. We're going to see here the biggest competition in your life against the kingdom of God. Philippians the second chapter and verse 17 he said if I be offered upon the sacrifice this is Philippians 2:17 and service of your faith I joy and rejoice with you all he said, I'm willing to spend and be spent. For what? The kingdom of God, which, which is for the people of God. For the same cause do you joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly to you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. Now, now, let's just stop right here. He's interested in what? Now, this is far different than interested in my ministry. Right? He didn't say, I'm sending them to check on you to see, make sure that you're still just supporting me. Or if you're still, you know. No, I mean, he's interested in what? Your. Your state. And he said that Timotheus, he's interested in your state. Keep reading. Verse 21, for what? All, All seek their own. Not the things... Which are Jesus Christ. What a statement. All seek their own. Listen to the, uh, the Amplified. Others all seek to advance their own interests. Not those of Jesus Christ. Are we seeking first the kingdom of God is seeking to advance the kingdom. Right? Now, when he says all, we know it. that's not 100%. It didn't include him. Didn't include Timothy, right? That's right. But it seems like, <laughs> outside of a few people, it seems like everybody. Yeah. It's just interested in their self. That's right. Me and mine, my stuff. What's the biggest competition for the body, excuse me, the kingdom of God being first place in your life? Your stuff. Advancing your interests. All seek their own. Not the things that are Jesus Christ. He said everybody is seeking to advance their interests. A lot of ministers and ministries and churches haven't seen this. And it's not for us to judge anybody but ourselves. Right? We must not, I purpose, and I want you to join with me, that we do not just become obsessed with building Faith Life Church. Right? No. We are going to be kingdom minded. We don't care about denominational labels. We don't care if it's somebody that we've known or haven't known. If they're in the kingdom, we're part of them. They're part of us. And we are going to be those God could use to support any part of His kingdom anywhere. Right? We're not the Savior. We can't do everything. But so many people are limited because of their prejudice. 
Now when you say prejudice, people sometimes think race prejudice. Black, white. Man, that's just the tip of the iceberg. There are all kind of people that are in one denomination that are prejudiced against the other's denomination. Well, y'all are so-and-so. Well, y'all are Baptist. Well, y'all are word of faith. What does that mean? Well, you know all those word of faith are the same. That's like saying all white people are the same. All men are alike. <laughs> huh? All black people are like that. That's ignorant. Right? You got good white people and you got sorry white people. <laughs> you got good black people and you got sorry black people. Right? You got good word, faith, word of faith people and you got sorry word of faith people. You got good Baptists and you got bad Baptists. Right? And any other group that you want to mention. But do you understand God is not interested in all of that? He does not see black, white, Baptist, Catholic. What does He see? Kingdom of God? Not kingdom of God. That's it. How do you get in the kingdom of God? You must be born again. Right? And you got people who are kingdom of God minded. And you got people who are build my kingdom minded. Build my thing. And don't try to judge anybody now but yourself. What are you building? What do you want built? What are you focused on? It's easier to say <laughs> than to live. Because it's not about, you know, you can say anything sitting up in here in these comfortable blue chairs, paid for blue chairs <laughs> on Sunday morning. But then you can switch off your religious switch tomorrow morning and spend all your waking moments Working, working, working to build something else. And that's what's happening. Now that doesn't mean that everybody's supposed to quit their job and become a preacher. <laughs> no. But it does mean two main things. Are you listening this morning now? Are you, are you awake? You're, you're focused? Are you with me on this? Two main things. That number one... This good news about the kingdom of God has got to be preached to every nation. we got to do our part to get this good news out. That's number one. I said that's number one. That's number one. Oh, you all not with me strong enough on this. Number one, it's not your house. It's not your car. Number one is not your kids. Number one is not our church building. It's not a paid in full. It's none of this. Why is there a paid in full? So this, you know, if we didn't have this place, we couldn't have these cameras. We didn't have these cameras. We didn't have this place. The message wouldn't be going out all over the world this morning. Right? What's the objective? Everything, the, the airplanes, the computers, the tools, the cameras, the satellites, all for what? Amen. Get the good news out. Get it out. So that everybody on the planet can hear about what God has done. And what He is doing. And what is coming. The good news about the kingdom of God. That's number one. Number one. Number one. Every time you draw a breath, every time you bat your eyes, every day of every week of your life. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. That's why we preach prosperity. Got to have money to do this. That's why we preach healing. 
Can't be sick at home in the bed and do this. You've got to have strength. Behold, go do this. Right? Go into all the world. Proclaim the good news to every creation. That's number one. Are we really giving our all to do this? Millions of Christians are not. They're not. They don't have this mindset at all. They come to church, maybe on Sunday, maybe once a month, to get fed. Because I feel weak and I need to be built up, Brother Keith. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And then leave and go, well, I'm a good Christian. I went to church Sunday and now I got to build my business. Got to build my family. Got to build my nest egg. And people live like this until they, they wake up one day and realize I've got five days to live and my life is over. Did you hear me now? And they have not sought first the kingdom of God. But not me and you. I said not me and you, not you and I, not us. Not us. We are in the kingdom. The kingdom is in us. We are kingdom minded. And let's keep it in our mouth long after we're not teaching this series anymore. Let's keep talking about the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, kingdom this, kingdom that, the kingdom. Because what is the kingdom? God and the people of God. And all the people that need to become the people of God. Right? <laughs> it's all about people. The kingdom consists of people. Not, not land, not territory. People over which God has dominion and rule. Jesus is Lord over these people. That is the dominion and kingdom of God. Now go with me to your place there in Luke 14. Now when we're talking about these things, I know people's hearts are stirred. But here's a big important difference. Don't, don't, don't sit there. Or watch there and, and say, mm, I want to do it. I want to do it. Don't say that. Say, I'm doing it. I will do it. See, wanting to do something, I want to do it. No, but I don't know how. Well, he'll show you how. It's not a matter of whether you can or not. He's already told you and I to do it. Not a matter of whether we can or not. And he, he already knew we didn't know how. He doesn't need us to tell him how. He already knows that. What, is, what does he require of us? A willingness. A willingness to put him first. And his things first. And to give our all for the kingdom. Just like our master. We're Christians. Christ I ends. Those like the anointed one. He came into this earth on a mission. Is that on a mission? What did he give? He gave all. 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 For the kingdom of God. Which means for God the Father and for you and me. He gave it all. Willing to do it and did it. What about you and I? Same thing. Same thing. Christianity. Church. Outreach must not be a side thing with us that we do on the weekend or we do. No, it's got to be our life. Our life. We live to advance the interests of God. We live and are willing and give our all for the increase of the kingdom of God. Luke 14. In Luke 14, verse 15, one of them that sat at meat with Jesus heard what he was saying, and he said to him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Did Jesus talk about the kingdom of God? Yes. He talked about it so much. 
And we, we've already seen this, that people were always asking him about it because he talked about it so much. And his disciples and, and were asking him about the place. And the Pharisees came to him one time and they said, well, now, when is this kingdom going to show up? Luke 17. He said, well, when is it showing up? You keep talking about it. That's when he said, it doesn't come with outward observation. Kingdom of God is in you. Why did they ask that question? Because he's talking about it all the time. And they're like, well, well, when is this kingdom you keep talking about showing up? He also said, you know, some, of, some people stand here. They will not see death till they see the kingdom of God come with power. Amen. Did they see it? Yes. When? When he, was when he was raised from the dead. Oh, glory to God. Then the kingdom of God has come. And since that time, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. (laughs) Luke 14, he said, blessed is he that will eat bread in the kingdom of God. He said, man, this kingdom of God is something. Whoever gets to have a meal in the kingdom of God, whoo, he's a blessed man. And Jesus said, listen to this, a certain man made a great supper, and he bade many. And he sent his servant at supper time and said to them that were bidden, come. For all things are ready. And they all with one consent begin to make excuse. One said, I got a piece of ground. I must go see it. Uh, please excuse me. Is he putting first the kingdom of God? What's he putting first? His stuff, his property. I got stuff I got to tend to. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I've got, I've got to go test them. I got a lot of money in them. And uh, please excuse me. And another one said, well, you know, I just married a wife. And so I can't come. You understand. And so the servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house said, well, I understand. People have a life. And they have stuff they've got to do. And if they could just give me, you know, a half day out of the week. I'd be happy with that. No, he was angry. Right? And verse 25 and 26, rather, Jesus said this, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children... And brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he can't be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me, he can't be my disciple. Which of you intending to build a tower don't sit down first and count the cost? See, this side of Christianity hasn't been preached. Has it? It's come receive Jesus and be saved and go to heaven. Right? Jesus preached more than being a believer. He preached being a disciple. What's a disciple? One who follows the leader. Right? Commits themselves completely to the training of the master. And here's what Jesus, and this is not the only place. You know it. You've read the scriptures. He, what does he require? He said, if you're going to be my disciple and you're going to follow me, I've got to be number one. The kingdom's got to be number one. Not mama, not daddy, not husband, not wife, not son, not daughter, not brother, not sister, not you. This is not preached. Enough. <laughs> well, you can tell why. You get such roaring response <laughs> as you just heard. <laughs> but this is the biggest competition against the body of Christ in your life. What? Your stuff. You. Right? Because you can't have two masters. 
You can't serve two masters. You can't spend the same money on two things. You can't spend the same, the, the, the same time on two things. Right? The money you blew, excuse me, the, the time, rather, you blew watching that dumb movie. You were not praying. You were not reading the Bible. You were not at church. Right? You were not resting. Sleeping so you could have strength. To go do something for the kingdom. And once it's spent, it's spent. You can't spend it on two things. Right? Money, time, whatever it is. If you're putting God first, then He's first with your time. He's first with your money. He's first with your resources. Then you're not. Your family's not. Right? Oh, y'all better pray for your pastor. See, do you see what a, a twisted mess this has become? You got all kind of people that come to church and they feel like the pastor's job and the staff's job and the church's job is to serve me. Right? And if I, if I want to see somebody, I ought to see them now. And if I want somebody to come sit down and spend a day with me, they ought to come now. Including you, preacher man. You're my preacher. Have no respect for God. No respect for the things of God. If I ask, people don't even know what a pastor is. A pastor's a daddy. Are the children supposed to show respect to their daddy and their mama? Then do the kids waltz in and go, Daddy, now you come in here and do what I want you to do now. <laughs> Not at this house. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you're my pastor. Well, if I am, then sit down and do what I say. Listen, people don't like that. Ooh, no, no. No. Because from their particular group and denomination, they hire their little preachers and they fire them whenever they get ready. Yeah. And they swap them out every year too, whether they need it or not. Right. <laughs> Especially if somebody messes in their business a little bit too much and, hey, 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 hey now. Now we come to you, you preach your little sermon, but don't get in my life. What they don't realize is they're saying that to God. They think it's a man, but they're saying that to God. People don't have the, the concept. They're like, hey, I got up and cleaned up and came, and I put $5 in the plate. What else do you want? And it's not me that wants it. God requires much more, much more than a few hours and a few dollars. Right? right? Keep reading. He said, verse 33, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsakes not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. All. Everybody say all. 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 Say this out loud. All for the kingdom. All for, the kingdom. All for God. All for, God. All for the people of God. All for the work of God. All for the kingdom. All. 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 See, we got we got terrorists that are more committed than Christians. Right? Oh, they got their families, they got their jobs, they got their their occupations and their educations, but they're on standby. Right? At any moment, they're ready to walk away from their wife and kids, walk away from their job, walk away and lay down their own life. And they believe lies. But they ought not be more committed to a lie than we are to the truth and the kingdom of God 
And people that went can't even go do something at the church or for a mission or for an outreach because I, I got to be, you know, I got to have supper with my kids. Come on. Come on. Preach it. That's it. That's good. Yeah. I got to do this. My business requires this. And, and they think, well, well, preacher, you know, what do you want of me? Again, we've already been through this. Phyllis and I went through this in the early stages of our marriage and ministry. She's told this before, so I got I begin to get a hold of this. I begin to see. This ain't no nine to five thing. Amen. This ain't no twenty years retire and retire thing. Right. Are y'all with me now? Yeah. <laughs> and so I begin to, to make more and more commitments. More and more commitments of my time and my life, night and day. And I was immersed in this, and Phyllis was in the business world. And so we were, you know, we were going different directions. And we'd get into talking about it, and, and, and the commitments that I'm requiring. See, that's one thing about marriage. You must have equal commitment. Yes. Right. How can two walk together? Right. Lest they agree. If one person is more sold out than another person, you're going to have trouble. More committed than another person. Well, well, she's into this. I'm, I'm getting the word night and day. And, and so we begin to talk and I begin to tell her about what kind of commitments we're talking about doing. And she's like, that's everything. What, what do you want of me? I said, it ain't me. I said, we got to be examples. She said, I don't want to be an example. <laughs> I said, it doesn't matter. We already are. She said, I, she said that many, I don't want to be. I said, I, I know how you feel, but this is it. And it's 24-7. So yeah, but you're a preacher, Brother Keith, and thank God I ain't called to that. Oh, but you are. Maybe not to stand behind a pulpit, maybe not to pastor, but you are called. These are not preacher verses. Right here. Are they? This is believer and disciple. Disciple verses. How many are supposed to be disciples of the Lord? Followers of His. Then you got to be willing to leave everything. Now we know He's not telling us to hate each other. In the sense of like First John said, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Right? If you hate your brother, you're walking in darkness. But here he talks about hating your brother. If you don't hate your brother, sister, what does that mean? Well, if you look up the words, one of them gets into this, to love less. To love less. And it's a preference deal. And it also means to detest. And I've seen this in my own life. I remember when Phyllis and I first began to answer the call on our life. I, you know, I thought I was doing all right. It was really small. I had a pretty wife, a hot rod, a good dog, a fast motorcycle. <laughs> and for a southern boy... I had a job, one of the better jobs in my little community. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about or not? I mean, dog rode in my truck, caught the Frisbee. You understand what I'm talking about? It would protect my motorcycle. Pretty wife who would go with me and to mess with hot rods and ride bikes. And I thought, But then something happened to me. I began to listen to tapes. Messed me up. For living that life. Month after month, I listened to tapes. Month after month, month after month, month after month. Didn't realize it, but my faith was being fed for the first time. And my spirit was being fed. And as it did, I began to be dissatisfied Amen. with my perfect country boy life. 
Don't you misunderstand me. I still like bikes and good dogs and, and my pretty wife. <laughs> Not in that order. <laughs> Come on, cut me some slack, guys. <laughs> but something has taken the preeminence in my life. And what happened as, as I began to, to get more of the word in me, I began to be so dissatisfied with my little job and, and my little car and my little life. I began to be dissatisfied to the point where I got to where I detested it. That's this hating he's talking about. Yes, sir. Oh, do you see this? Yes, sir. Why? Because I was not made just to live a life. I was not made just to be married or have a family or just to have a job or just to have a business or just to be able to retire early or have fun. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Do you understand our real fun comes later? We, we, we ain't had fun like we're going to have. And we can have a few things here and now, but mainly we ought to be on the job here now. We're on the front line. We are to be good soldiers of the Lord. We're doing our tour of duty in the earth, in the war zone now. That hadn't been real to people. They've been trying to retire down here. You can't retire down here. This is the war zone. We're doing our tour. Yes. Our tour of duty. Amen. And we're being trained yes. for the coming kingdom rulership. Yes. Right? Yes. And it ought to be on our mind every morning when we wake up and every night when we lay our head on the pillow. Yes. The kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom, the kingdom. It's why I was made. It's why I'm here. Yes. It's what's going on. Yes. What's my part? What can I do? What should I be doing to advance the kingdom of God? And so during that period of my life, I got so dissatisfied. Didn't know I had a call on my life. Didn't know just a few years later, I'd be standing looking at you in a church. Or that we'd be involved in the Word, going around the world. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But God did. He knew there was more in life for me than where I was at. And what I was doing. And I got so disgruntled. I'd go to work and I'm like. Oh. I'd have to make myself. Stir up. And, 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 and I'd you know. I'm working on my hot rod. But it just didn't do it for me like it used to. And I'd make a fast pass on my bike. And it's like. Okay. <laughs> Done that before. Yeah. You might know what I'm talking about. It just, why? Because I had a taste of something bigger. Something better, something more than this life. And when you do, you must come to detest anything else that tries to take that number one slot. I don't care if it's mama. I don't care if it's daddy. I don't care if it's husband or wife or baby or son or daughter. I don't care who or what it is. Nothing has that place in your life. Nothing. 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 He is first. The advancement of the kingdom is first. Yes, yes. If you're not going to do that, you're not interested in that, then you're not going to work well around me. Right? Because right? that's, that's all we want to talk about. That's all we want to do. Are you with me on this now? Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If we had time, we could read Scripture after Scripture after Scripture. Matthew 13, go there quickly. Thank you, Master. Oh, bless you, Lord. Now, that doesn't mean you, 
you jump up and just move somewhere. That doesn't mean that you just run, quit your job. Maybe you're supposed to serve God in that job. Right? Maybe that's your place. If not, you'll know it. But what you must do is give Him the first place in your heart. That's where it starts. In your heart that you are willing to go anywhere. Or stay anywhere. Or do anything. Right? Matthew 13. Jesus said, he's teaching the people about the kingdom of God. And in Matthew 13 and 43, Matthew 13, 43, Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their Father. That's us. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like to treasure hid in a field, the which when a man has found, he hides, and for joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Yes. Amen. Once you find the kingdom of God, that takes preeminence over everything else and you're willing to liquidate anything and everything and spend your own life and lay it down for this you found something more precious than your kids than your spouse than your parents than your own life is that right? keep reading again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he found one pearl of great price, he went and did what? Sold all that he had and bought it. Glory to God. Have we found the pearl of great price? Have we found that which is greater than anything else? More important than your life and my life on the earth. More important than all of our stuff and all of our businesses and all of our parents and kids and friends. More important. More bigger. More important. Are we willing to spend it all for the kingdom? To give it all for the kingdom? Thank you, Master. Well, this life, is, this life is short, I'm telling you. It is a vapor. It's a puff. And you are going to be so glad when it's over in another few seconds that you can say, I didn't waste my life chasing my dreams. I laid down my life for the kingdom of God. So your life meant something. And you have no regrets. See, that's, the, that's what was going on in the beginning days of the church. That's why people were selling their land, their houses, their stuff, so that nobody in the church had any needs. They had their, what, what's strong enough to make you do something like that? You, you, no, you no longer think like you used to. You, you're focused on the kingdom. Yeah. And God's going to bring us resources. Yes. And far greater resources. Then he's going to tap you on the shoulder. He's going to say, Rick, the kingdom has need of that. I'm not just talking about your church here. We're not just faith life church minded. We're kingdom of God minded. Right? And so, we're not our own king. We're not the general. We're not in charge of this. We follow orders. We put resources where the kingdom most needs them. For now. Right? right? Amen. And he puts a finger us and he says, uh, uh, they need that jet over there. Well, we get it over there. Yeah. Right. 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 They need that money, they need that vehicle over there. We'll get it over there. Yes, right? right? Instead of mine. Well, that's mine. That's mine. Is it? No. It can be. Yep. And you can be unhappy. Yes, you can live your little small life. Right? 
Or you can say, hey, stuff is just stuff. God, here I am. Anything under my hand is available for kingdom use. And if he says, all right, put all this over here, put all that over there. See, the, the exact opposite of what we're talking about is the rich young ruler. He came and it sounded good. Oh, I, I want eternal life. I want to give it all for the kingdom. I want to, he said, okay, all right. You know, all that money you got, I want you to liquidate it and I want you to put it over there for those folks that are hurting those poor folks. And then come on and follow me. Let's do the kingdom. What did he do? Uh, 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 all? <laughs> all my money? That's why he said, it's harder for a rich man to get in the kingdom. Yes. Why? Up all because it's not an all thing. You say, what do you want from me, preacher? How much money have I... It ain't me. Or any preacher. It is your God. What does he want? All. 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 All your thought. All your time. All your money. All your stuff. All. 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 And if you're not willing to give it, he said, you're not worthy to be my disciple. And if you put your hand in the pack and start looking back and go, oh, 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 what am I having to give up? <laughs> he said, you're not worthy. We must not talk in sacrificial terms. Oh, we've worked so hard. And bless the hearts, did you know? Did you know that they sold their car and put it in the kingdom? Bless their heart. And they said, yeah, I did. And it was my baby too. But I give it all up for Jesus. You're acting unworthy. You taint your seed. It is the greatest privilege. Right? That the Lord would tap you on the shoulder and use something you got and use you. You don't go, do a God. You go, I've been wanting you to use me. I've been wanting you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll get it there right away. Amen. Come on. Yeah. What a privilege. Yes, sir. Where are you? Hallelujah. Go to Luke 16. I think we're, we're closed. There. Luke 16. And you'll see a revelation of a passage that you might not have seen as strong. Luke 16 13, no servant can serve two masters. Who can do it? Nobody. Nobody can. Either he will hate one and love the other, or he'll hold one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. There are people in this room right here today, you feel pulled. And the reason you feel pulled is because of lack of commitment to God. Because once the commitment is like it should be, there's no more pull. Well, I want to, Lord, but I, but I got this and I got that. You remember the, the guys that came to Jesus and said, Lord, you know, we'll follow you wherever you go. But, uh, you know, let us go home and wait till our folks die. And then we bury them, and then we'll come up. He said, <laughs> let the dead bury their dead. People think that sounds hard. Who said that? Jesus. Jesus. Why? Because this life ain't about family. Right. Right. Lies have been preached from pulpits. Yeah. People, Christians have been taught to put your husband and wife and kids first. Yeah. That's right. What if Moses had done it? 
His wife didn't want him to obey God and lead the people out. His wife didn't want him to accept circumcision and do what God... What if he'd let, what he'd let Zipporah lead him around? What about David? What if he'd let his wife and his family, you know, be first? She came out and she said, What a sight you are, dancing out there. He said, Oh, I'm sorry. Like a lot of men. Hmm? How about Jesus? Gee, what if he'd have put his family first? And then I stood at the door saying, you know, would you tell my boy to come here? And his brothers and sisters are there. Mary's there. That's one big reason we don't pray to Mary. Because Mary can be wrong. And because nobody in the Bible ever prayed to her. No. But he didn't even get up and go see them. What did he say? Who are my brothers and my sisters and my family? Those that hear the word of God and do it. People that are as, as gung-ho for the kingdom as I am. People that put the kingdom of God first, just like me. That's my family. Thank you, Master. Thank, stand up on your feet and let's begin to praise God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Got your mic. Hallelujah. Come up here. Hallelujah. I didn't finish reading. But I will in a minute. You go ahead. I just need to tell him the rest of the story. The Paul Harvey. The rest of the story. He only told the part of the story. Okay? He told the part that he leaves out about because he don't like to embarrass me or, or make me feel bad. But the rest of the story is the reason that Keith and I had so much trouble for so many years is because Keith was putting God first and I was choosing not to put God first. Those times that he was saying, telling me, we got to do this, Phil, and I was saying, I don't want to be an example. I don't want to do this. It's because I was doing the part of I wanted to stay in the business world. I wanted to do my thing, and I was doing my thing and getting my way and doing what I wanted to do, and you've heard me tell it before, and all the while miserable. Getting my way and all the while miserable. Not putting God first, and that's what people don't understand. You're totally miserable. You're broke. Things are not going well. You're hurting. Your marriage is hurting. Your kids are suffering. Nothing is going well for you. And God is all the while saying, do this, do this, do this. And you're trying to figure it out with your head. And he's all the while saying, Phil, do what he's telling you to do. Put me first. Put me first. And all the while I'm saying, no, God, if I put you first, then I'll have to lose everything I want to do. Everything Phyllis wants to do. Everything I've got to submit and do everything that Phyllis wants to do. Well, she loses everything. What does she get to do? I've got to do what Keith wants me to do and I've got to do what God wants me to do. When do I get to do what Phyllis wants me to do? Right. You got it? When does Phyllis get to do what Phyllis wants to do? Well, I found out that if I do what God wants me to do, it's much more fun than what Phyllis wants to do. And I enjoy it so much more than what Phyllis wants to do. And I'm happier because he's so yes. much smarter than Phyllis. Yes, thank you, Lord. And thank he's so Lord. much richer than Phyllis. Thank you, Lord. And he knows a better way than Phyllis yes, knows. Yes, yes. And not only that, thank but if I follow God. the head and the leadership, he oh, gives him God. wisdom thank to do what he God. tells him to do. And then I follow this him and I'm not afraid to submit to him. And then we're in the right way and we're going in the right direction. And he gives me a church and I get a Phyllis account that I can do whatever I want to do with my Phyllis account. And, and I am just blessed and coming and going in every direction. 
but then I can stay over here and do what Phyllis wants to do and be miserable and cry and depressed and sad and upset, but I'm all the while doing what Phyllis wants to do. Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah. It's fear. It's fear that I'm going to lose what Phyllis's identity is all the while not knowing that Phyllis has no identity except in God yeah. and in Keith. Yeah. Who is Phyllis without God and without Keith? Nobody. We are nobody until we find out who we are in God and if you're married, who you are in your husband. Because that's the way that God planned it that way. So find out who you are in God. And if you're married, find out who you are in your spouse. And do the work for God. And then you'll be able to have the things that God wants for you. Hallelujah. 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 What the scripture said, if you, uh, if you seek to find and keep your own life, what happens? You lose it. So she's just talking about, when do I get to do what I want to do? What's the answer? You don't. That's, that's like saying, when do I get to be my own Lord? When do I get to run this? Well, if He's your Lord, you don't. Yeah, but I've got to find myself. And I've got to find out who I am. And I go, well, like she said, it's only in Him. Thanks be unto God. Close your eyes if you would. Say out loud, Father God, you are my God, my one and only God. Jesus is my Lord, my one and only Lord. I am not my own Lord. I don't run my own life. Nothing else takes preeminence. Over my God and the kingdom of God. I seek first the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, let's lift our hands and our hearts and just thank the Lord some more. Father, in your presence, we worship you. We wait on you. We adore you. You are our God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Well, can we take communion over this this morning and, and commit? And as we hold up the elements, we're saying, Lord, you gave it all for the kingdom. Your whole spirit, your soul, your body, your blood, your life. You gave it all. And I commit to give all. You can be seated. Ushers come. and We'll serve the people. and Either sing with the singers or be Praying in your heart and in your mind. Keep your eyes open until you are served, please. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
Everybody should be involved. You might think, well, Brother Keith, I haven't been living right, or I don't know if I'm even saved. Well, you can get saved right now while we take communion. That's what this represents. Nobody should be left out. If you need to repent, you repent. Thank you, Lord. But raise your hand if you haven't been served. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood. Oh, 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 thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Lord. Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you for the blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the blood. I am free by the blood. I'm free by the blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. I'm clean by the blood. I am clean by the blood. I'm clean by the blood. I'm clean by the blood of Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood, oh thank you, thank you for the blood, thank you for the blood, thank you for the blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. Oh, we thank you, thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the blood. Jesus Christ, thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Luke 22, Jesus said, well, it says they, they sat down, he and the twelve, and he said, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will not any more eat thereof till it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it. Gave it to them and said, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Hold up the bread. Said out loud, Father God, I worship you. And thank you, Jesus, for giving your all for me and for the kingdom. You gave your body. You bore our sins in your own body, on the tree, so that we being dead might live under righteousness. And by your stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Break your knee. Hallelujah. Said out loud, I receive the benefits. Of the broken body. His body was broken. So I could be whole. Hallelujah. The scripture said likewise. The cup he took after supper. And he said this cup. Is the new testament in my blood. Which is shed for you. Hold up the cup. Said aloud, thank you, Lord, for giving all. You gave your life. You gave your blood so I could live, so I could be clean, washed from all sin. You are Lord of my life, Lord of me, and all I have control over. And I reverence the blood, which makes me clean. Take and drink.
Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud. I have no reason to be ashamed, condemned. I have no reason to be embarrassed or guilty because I've been washed, made innocent, made clean. I am clean. By the blood. Hallelujah. Now believe it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No guilt. No shame. No fear. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm clean by the blood. Oh, I'm clean by the blood. I'm clean. I'm made innocent. I'm made right. I'm made clean by the blood. I'm made clean by the blood. I'm made clean. I'm made clean. I'm made clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. I'm clean. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Stand if you would. Now, all of us, unless you just refuse to participate, confess Jesus as Lord. Confess faith and reverence for what He's done, His body, His blood. And if you did that truly, then you are born again. We're going to sing, we're going to go out. But as we do, if this is the first time you've ever confessed Jesus as Lord of your life, don't go out, come down to the front. There'll be people standing here. Or if you've got any questions, or if you're not sure about your salvation, don't leave this place in that condition when you can and you're supposed to be sure. Next Sunday, what's happening? Oh, has God done something for us? Are we glad? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We ought to tell it. We ought to act like it. And we're going to. So if you're visiting, if you can come back with us next week, come. If you're watching my internet, if you can get here, get here. Come. Someone said, well, I, I can't come. Can you? Are you sure? Well, I can't afford to come. Ah, gas is so high. God's higher. God's higher than gas. Imagine that. How how easy would it be for God to get you some gas money to get somewhere? You think God's going to go, how much a gallon is that stuff? (laughs) It's only a deal if you don't have the money. If you got plenty of money, it's not a deal. Right? And God can get you that way. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to sing victory is mine. Well, that's good. We're going to sing it. As we march out in victory, now you come back in this place thanking God Sunday, but come here Friday night first, and prayer night's Wednesday night, right? Oh, victory. Victory is mine. Victory. Victory is mine. Oh, victory today is mine. Yeah. According to the word, I have what I want. Take your cups with you. Take your cups out to the trash receptacle, please. Victory today. Oh, is thank mine. you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. According to the word, oh. I have what I heard. Victory today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory, is mine. Victory today.
glory today is mine. According to the word, I have what I've heard. Victory today. 